All right, I had a student send me an email this morning. They wanted to know how to solve this problem on the BA2 calculator. So what I thought I'd do, I thought I'd make a video and show you how to do it on Excel first, and then show you how to do it on the calculator second. So let's read the problem. It says the Wall Street Journal reports that the rate on six-year treasury securities is 1.65%. So I'm gonna use the notation out of the book. So given we'll say 1R6 is 1.65%. Okay, I'm gonna make this bold and underline it. And then I'm gonna do, the, the book uses these as subscripts, so I'm gonna hold down Shift and hit the left arrow to highlight this. Then I'm gonna hold Control, Shift, F for font, then Alternate, D for subscript, and then Enter. And then I'm gonna go over here, hit the left arrow to highlight it, Control, Shift, F, Alternate, D, Enter. Okay, so now we have the subscript. You also can subscript them by going in here and just clicking subscript, right? Um, I was just showing you the shortcut key. So now this says the, right now, the rate on a six year treasury security is 1.65%. And then it also, then the next thing it says is the eight year treasury securities is 2.6%. So we have 2.6% on, and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this down so it keeps the formatting. And then I'm just gonna highlight this and make it an eight. So it's a, so, that, so we have one, uh, a six-year treasury security right now, the yield, okay, or the rate is 1.65%, and an eight-year treasury security right now, the rate is 2.6%. And it also says we're using unbiased expectations theory. That's what we're given in this problem. So what do we want to find? Um, I'm going to copy this format down here. So what do we want to find? We want to find, it tells you right here, it says, what does the market expect a two-year treasury security to be six years from now? And they use the expected value function. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this down again so I don't have to mess around with the formatting. And on the front, I'm going to put E. Well, see, you're probably going to have to mess around with the formatting anyway, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and put E here, and then we want to make that a, a superscript, right? So you can go in here and just get rid of this. And we want the expected value. You know, this is a small r. Oh, we don't want that. I'm going to highlight this, make that a small r. And then we want this. Again, we don't want that subscript. So I'm going to take this off. Anyway, you're going to have to mess around with it to get it to look like, like this. And then also we want to change this to a six and we want to change this to a two. All right, so this is what we want to find. All right, so for a solution, uh, for a solution, well, we have to, well, I'll take a formula out of the book and the formula we're going to use is this formula out of the book, okay? And if I want to solve it on Excel, I'm going to show you how to do this on Solver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the left-hand side of the equation. So I'm going to go left-hand side, left-hand side of, the, of this equation up here is going to be this right here, this 1 R8, okay? So I'm going to say this equals 1 plus this, okay? So this n is what? It has to be to a power. So this n is going to be to the 8th power, right? Because because this is 1r8. So see how the n is the same? So it has to be the 8th power. Okay? So I'm going to go equals formula text so you can see that formula. All right. So that's the left-hand side of the equation. So I'm going to do the right-hand side. And the right-hand side is we're going to we're going to use these first right this is going to be the first part so we're going to say equals uh this times itself seven times so it's going to be equal to one plus or times itself six times right so it's this oh, forgot the equal sign sorry equals one plus this 
to the sixth, right? Because it's, it's similar to this. And then it's going to be times um, one plus, and then we want this answer here, right? So I'm going to say this answer is down. I'll just say it's right here, okay? We don't have anything right now. And then that has to be, so that's a two year, so it's going to be the second power. So this makes sense in a second, okay? And I'm going to copy the, so you see the formula. Okay, so I'm going to, I guessed, now what I did, I'm going to say, I'm going to guess this, I'm going to say it's 5.5%. I don't know what it is, okay? Uh, and these are, that was a pretty good guess because these are almost exactly the same. So this is going to be the answer. This is going to be, I'm going to copy this down. This is my answer, all right? And we're gonna change this number until this equals this. Now they're not exactly equal, even though they look equal, they're not exactly equal yet, right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use, we're gonna make Excel guess. So we're gonna change, if I change this to 4.5%, 4.5, see that they're still not equal. So I want those to be equal, all right? Um, so I could keep guessing here until these are equal, but that might that's, that's a lot of work, so I'm gonna make Excel do it. So I'm gonna go into data, and I'm gonna use a solver function. Now if you don't have solver, you're gonna to have to go, simply, you would simply go here to file, and then go into options, and then go to add-ins. And then here under add-ins, you're gonna hit go, and make sure your solver is clicked and go okay. And then the solver will appear right here. We're not. We, I could use something called goal seek. The solver is more powerful, and it's going to give you a more exact answer. So I'm going to use solver because we want this to be very exact. So I'm going to. Go, but before I go into solver, if these are equal, if I subtract them, they're going to be equal to zero. So I'm going to so this equals this minus this because we want the right hand side to equal the left hand side. There's an equal sign here. So this is zero if this is equal to this. In order to make this equal to this, remember, we have to play with this number because this number is what we're solving for. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to solver and I'm gonna set, I wanna set this number here. Remember, if they're equal, I need to set it to a value of zero and I wanna change this number here, okay? And then if I go solve, it gets pretty close to zero. This is a eight with an eight with nine zeros in front of it. So I'm going to accept that as the answers. So it says 5.5%. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, so I actually guessed that right. That was kind of, that's kind of funny. I guess that that close. All right. Uh, all right. So that's how you would solve it using Using uh, using uh, using solver. So let's see how we do with the calculator. So the calculator, let's pull, pull the calculator up. What we would do first, we'd have to do this left-hand side, right? So let me let me bring the calculator. First, we'd have to do the left-hand side, and so the left-hand side, um, two point six percent. You'd have to move the decimal place over twice, so it'd be 0 0.026. So one plus 2.6 percent. We're doing this right here, B3. One plus B3. So I go 1.026, and I want to take that to what power? The eighth power. So I'm going to go um, y to the x eight equals. So now I have this 1.2279 that we have here. Now I'm going to go ahead and store it because now I'm going to work on the right hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to store that in one because I want to keep all these decimal places. Even though this is rounded to four, it has all the places over to the right of that too. So we want to store it to maintain all the decimal places. We don't want to have rounding error because this is a pretty exact calculation. And then the next thing we want to do, this side of the equation, we can calculate all this because B2 is right here. So this is 0 0.0165. So I could say one 
plus 0 0.0165 is 1.0165. So that's 1 plus this, right, in decimal. Remember, it has to be in decimal. I'm going to take it to the 6th power. So I go to the y to the x, 6 equals, and that's 1.1032. So now I have to divide both sides of these equations by this in order to move this over here, right, to get rid of it here. So, so to divide both sides, I'm going to go 1 over x, okay, and I'm going to multiply times the left, which I stored in 1. So I'm going to go times, recall, 1 equals, and then, so now I've got rid of this and put it over there. Now I have to get, now I have this term as all that's left. And remember, I'm solving for b13 here. That's what this was right here. So the next thing I got to take the square root on both sides. So I'm going to take the square root. Okay, and then the last thing I got to do is subtract 1, and I go 1 minus equal. Oops, I forgot to do it. Well, I wonder how I get that back. Anyway, it was 1.055, and I as soon as I went minus 1 equal, then we want it. I'm using the wrong calculator. But anyway, so let me, so let me, let me do it again. I'm going to do it just so you can see it. So I'm, this was uh, uh, 1.0165. All right. And we're going to take it to the sixth power. And then we're going to, and then we have to divide it and then multiply it times the left hand side. And then take the square root. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, uh, let me try it one more time. Clear everything. Okay, recall one. We still have that, right? Still have the left hand side. So I'm going to take uh, 1.0165 y to the x, right? I'm going to take it to the sixth power. Six equals. Okay, now I have to divide it, so I'm going to. 1 over exit, I'm going to multiply it times, recall 1 equals. And then I have to take the square root. And then finally I have this 1 here, so I'm going to go 1 minus equal. Oh, I did it again, I did it backwards. I should have meant minus 1. Okay, good practice for you guys to see how this works. So I'm going to go 1.0165 y to the x6 equals. 1 over x times, recall, 1 equals square root minus 1 equals, and then there's 0.055, and that's the same answer we got there. Um, sorry about, I'm not used to this calculator yet, so sorry about all those mistakes we finally got there. I kept trying to go my, 1 minus instead of minus 1, so I wasn't getting to this. So we have the same answer as we did with the calculator. So hopefully that helps. That's it for that problem. Thank you. Bye.